Uh, but I, I, I want to bring some value to the people that are like looking for maybe more of like the technical aspect. Totally. Of it. So, so maybe for you, uh, let's talk like, what are you mainly using? So maybe like, uh, what do you, what's your go-to like interface or your software DAW? Uh, are you, you're doing a lot of mixing remotely production in house or no I'm, receiving stuff I'm kind doing, of generally those kind of things. Totally. Yeah. I'm doing uh, lately a lot of mixing. I haven't tracked anybody in a minute. And I, I love tracking, but I would be perfectly happy just to stay busy mixing and mastering. Um, but yeah, for mixing or tracking or mastering, I'm a big Reaper user. I've used I've used it for. I mean, there's a good chance I've been there's a good chance I've been using it since like 2007 or something like this. Um, and so I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, and then for music creation like you know if i'm producing for someone else or i'm producing for myself or if i'm just writing music having fun um i'm a big bitwig user um and so i've used i've used that since i mean honestly since version one when i first kind of jumped into creating music in the computer i was still using reaper which at the time was pretty cumbersome for like midi and these other things and then I started to watch, you know, the rollout for Bitwig, and then I was like, "All right, I think I'm gonna hop to this." And uh, and I always think about like, you know, I can use Ableton pretty good because the workflow is really similar to Bitwig. But it's like every time I open it up, I'm like, "Yo, never mind. I'm not <laughs> gonna open up Bitwig." Yeah, again. yeah, yeah, dude. So it's crazy. Uh, I tried Bitwig forever ago, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't. I wasn't vibing with it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was coming from reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like very, very different, very, very different, different workflows. workflows. So it, like it mentally, I wasn't really kind of connecting. And then what's funny is I ended up going to pro tools. Uh, and you know, obviously I, it's just good for everybody to have at least a little bit of knowledge of pro tools in general, just because so many people use it. You're bound to get a, I think, uh, having a little bit of knowledge of every doll is probably a good practice oh. in any way oh, um, totally. just in general uh just because you never know what kind of sessions you're gonna get you're never gonna gonna know what you're gonna walk into as a traveling producer oh totally uh, yeah but but then i did go to ableton eventually which is like kind of what i use now and it's funny i looked into bitwig probably a month ago mm -hmm. and i was like dang they changed so much and it looks so similar to ableton now yeah. like it feels very similar to ableton now, totally and like which, and which is super cool and this is so this is so ridiculous, but like the main reason I never just dove into Ableton is I hate how it looks. Like I can't. Oh yeah, that that's a lot of people's qualm with it, oh, which yeah. I understand. It's and well, you know, you're staring at it for hours, and it's like there's just something about it where it's just the look of it. I'm just like ah, and so well, you gotta understand. I come from Reason, which is like very similar, which is like very blocky and oh, like yeah. everything. I remember I was I messed with the really early version of Reason when I was like 18 or something like this. Yeah, I was in uh, Reason Three is kind of where I got into it, and uh, this was when I was in college. I want to say yeah is when I when I started doing. Let's know this, but I I used to produce out of Reason. The Reason didn't have any audio, so I used to at that point like it was. MIDI only. Yeah. <laughs> so I would so I would have to like if I was producing out a guitar, I would have to learn how to make a MIDI guitar sound realistic. That's that's in, that seems in like two thousand and nine yeah, that reason. Se seems like a painful process. <laughs> oh, it was annoying. It was very annoying. <laughs> so that's when I kind of started diving into like the Ableton side and the Pro Tool side. But yeah, no, that's uh, this is super cool. Why um for for the for the reaper side of thing is it the flexibility for you yeah like the it, ability to just kind of do whatever you need to yeah the flexibility is a huge part of it i'm also someone i think this also ties back to punk and hardcore it's like i'm someone where like if you give me five op like if, if i'm gonna buy a microphone if you give me five options i'm buying the microphone from the mad scientist working in his basement like i just can't yeah. it's like i love the underdog and it's like that that part of me just gets drawn so quickly to stuff um and also too it's like you know back in the day when i was in my early 20s it was like reaper is probably still the lightest weight daw that's gonna really run is. the smoothest regardless of your computer and you know when i was in my early 20s it was you know i was working off some 
a home built PC that was, you know, like these days probably wouldn't even boot windows. Um, and so it just being a lightweight and flexible and in a lot of ways, I think has a really has like a workflow and a layout that's more rem reminiscent of working on actual consoles. Like it's like, to me, it's really, uh, it's really obvious and intuitive and, uh, and yeah, it has a pretty deep ability to customize stuff too, which I've only kind of started to do a little bit more lately. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's like at this point, it's so ingrained in me just how to navigate through it and make everything go quick that, you know, when I use something else, I'm like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I, it's funny. Josh and co-host Josh and, um, our friend Lee, who's Josh's co-production partner, uh, in their business together, they, um, they both use a lot of Cubase and they talk yeah. about the macros built into Cubase being a big reason for why they still go yeah. back to it consistently. And I feel like Reaper would be a pretty similar for a similar reason where like being able to customize all of these different functions with just a keystroke probably yeah. has to be pretty wild. Yeah, I've been learning Cubase a little bit because I have a friend and fellow producer and engineer that um, uses Cubase and he was like, yo, like figure this out. We can kind of tag team some stuff. And yeah. still it's like, I'm pretty fluent in it, but it's just, you know, there's just a little stuff where I'm just, there's like, a lot. I'm just like, man, what the fuck? Like in, like in Reaper, any track can become a folder and the folder is also your bus. But in Reaper, you can have a, or in Cubase, your folder isn't a bus. So I have to make a folder and then make a bus. And I'm just like, Ooh, Who's fucking thinking this stuff up? It's dumb. Yeah, you know this. Just in pro, in, in Pro Tools, a folder is also a bus. So yeah. that's what I. But it can be either or. I think there's an option to where, like, when you make a folder, it says, "Do you want it to be a, just a folder, or, or do you or, want it to be a folder that is a bus?" Basically. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so, yeah, it's so funny to me. It's like obviously other people in their home base of DA, they're gonna open something else up and think the same stuff. But it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes exactly. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna learn. Like lately, it's like I'm going to learn Cubase, and then I'm just like, man, why is this so complicated? You know? Yeah. No, I always find Reaper being a really good uh, first off for people, especially if they're going into the beginning stages of running tracks live, mm -hmm. um, and they need something to track demos with, but then they also – they don't want to have something – I mean it can be complicated, but it's as complicated as you want to make it. Totally, that's kind totally. of my that's just my experience with Reaper is like it can be as bare bones or as complicated as you want to make it. Um, so for somebody just kind of getting into it, uh, I generally say uh, depending on what genre they want to go into and kind of where they want to lean, I generally say Reaper or Ableton. Those totally. are like my two DAWs of like, or if they're like, oh, I want to go work at a studio, just learn Pro Tools because sure, you're going to sure. have to learn Pro Tools That's anyway. That's just how it is. Uh, but if you're producing at home, I actually generally say to people like, Reaper's a great option. And then if you don't like the way it functions, learn Ableton. Because if you're in a band and you're going to run tracks, you're going to use one of those two DAWs anyway. Totally. Yeah, I mean, and I think for me, it's like, I think that Reaper makes is overwhelmingly makes sense if you're doing band based music it's like if you're yes. trying to you know make some house music uh ableton all day you know reaper is yeah. gonna just give you a headache um yeah but uh but yeah i've used it for years and so you know it's gonna stay that way until someone forces me to do something else, yeah, so. yeah 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 well it sounds and it sounds like you're you're willing to kind of slide and kind of go into a bunch of different areas so like being open-minded with that kind of stuff i think is really also pretty key because there was a while where it was like logic pro tools if you do midi work you're in logic if you do band work you're in pro tools totally. and like now and like i chose neither of those obviously oh, and yeah. so did you yeah so like, did you yeah i mean for me <laughs> well, it's like why? i mean I, I i have no qualm with pro tools but it's like what i said it's like if you line up a bunch of options it's like to me, it's like Pro Tools is what, like, that's like the guy on the football team. It's like, I'm not trying to kick it with him, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, send, send me somewhere stranger, you know. But. Well, <laughs> send me somewhere stranger is a great way to think about it. Yeah, for sure. No, I, for me, it was out of necessity. And it kind of seems like it was out of for you as well. So it was like, I had a really old PC, uh, PC based laptop. Couldn't run Logic on it because Logic is Mac yeah. only. Didn't have a Mac at the time. And I was a 
broke freshman in college uh, with this crappy computer. And then um, at the time, Pro Tools was locked into their uh their You had to buy system. the hardware, yeah. Yeah, you had to buy uh, whatever uh, interface that unlocked it, basically. Yeah. Um, which I always thought was really dumb. I never understood that. But um, I so, mean, I like, think- I... I wasn't going to buy I wasn't I at that point I had no reason I wasn't recording anybody I was producing like via MIDI or you know via the mic on my freaking laptop so I wasn't really like doing massive productions so uh that's why I end up leaning into the Ableton Reason side of things uh I didn't even know Reaper existed really (laughs) because I I wasn't I wasn't down that rabbit hole yeah, yeah. I mean, when I when I very first started, I was using like sonar or something, and then it yeah. was like I just I my this is so long ago I don't really remember too clearly, but I just felt like it I was having stability issues, like too many crashes, too many problems, and then yeah. uh, and then I tried out Reaper, and I was like, yo, this works for me. We'll we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs>